We are just a few days away from an incredibly tragic anniversary. It has been almost a year since the deadly mass shooting at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas, claiming lives of 19 young kids and two teachers in the days following the shooting. I was live on the ground in Uvalde speaking with members of the community and their leaders, including State Senator Roland Gutierrez, whose district includes Uvalde. I want to take a listen to a portion of the conversation I had with him then. If it isn't enough of a red flag to have a kid go into a store and buy two of these things in 48 hours and 1,800 bullets, that's a red flag. We needed a red flag law like Joe Moody presented in 2019, and we are still here in this place, and we have no change because we have a feckless leader in Austin that has done nothing to help our community. So what is it, what is it to get changed? What do you do? What happens? Listen, they've controlled the legislature in Austin for 20 years. If all I get to do is yell and scream, I'm going to yell and scream for as long as I'm there on this issue. Because enough is enough. We've had five school mass massacres under his watch. And he has done nothing other than school hardening. He's very proud of that. We saw the effects of school hardening here. The officers weren't even able to access the door because of school hardening. That isn't the answer. He says that it's a mental health problem. We'll go fund mental health, number one. But at the end of the day, this is the only country that this happens in. The only one. There's mental health in other countries. And the reason is because they have access to militarized weaponry where they can create this mass destruction. It needs to stop. So since that conversation, Senator Gutierrez has been tireless in his fight for answers about what exactly happened that day, in addition to pushing for meaningful gun reform. And he joins me now to talk more about this. As always, Senator Gutierrez, it is um, great to talk to you, of course. Um, let's talk about kind of the emotions surrounding um, this anniversary first, and then we'll talk about the politics and what has and has not been done. When you look back, on that interview, you listened to what you had to say. What are you thinking now? Well, there's obviously a lot of frustration, Yasmin, in all of this. Um, we know a lot more now, and yet we still don't know enough. Uh, you know, these folks in Texas, our Texas Rangers, our DPS, is operating still under this notion that we are not allowed to see everything. As you know, I uh, signed a non-disclosure agreement with the state of Texas. I first sued them. And uh, then I had to sign an NDA. I received a uh, hard drive with two terabytes of information, two terabytes of body cam footage. I've seen every bit of it. Uh, it's the worst failure you've ever seen, the worst horror you've ever seen. Children mutilated in schools, stacked in piles. Um, just, just horrible, horrible graphic imagery that, you know, to this day I can't take out of my head. And, you know, certainly sad and certainly frustrated because here we are, and just like I predicted in that a year ago, I, I yelled and screamed all session long and filed 21 bills that went nowhere because Republicans don't want to do anything on school safety. They don't want to do anything meaningful mm. on curbing access to weaponry, even after Allen, Texas, even after San Jacinto. It's interesting. I, I want to get into the gun talk in a moment, but when you look at two of the most recent shootings in Texas, right, the shooting of those five family members... I believe it was five, and then the shooting at the mall as well, right? There was a real lack of transparency initially at the mall shooting. We weren't hearing immediately as to what was happening and how many people had in fact been killed, which was perplexing to me having covered Uvalde um, on the ground, right? And there was a real concern with the lack of response time when it came to the shooting of that family as well, right? Has Texas learned any lessons from Uvalde, considering what has transpired since then? I, I mean, clearly no, Jasmine, because you, you see what happened in San Jacinto. It took a while for us to arrest that guy. Um, it was really mostly, you know, through federal agents that we were able to, to find this person and grab him. Secondarily, the Allen, uh, Texas mall shooting is really most troubling because it's a different kind of failure on the Department of Public Safety. That uh, incidents occurred because of some form of white supremacy. Uh, 
After our mass shooting at the El Paso Walmart some years ago, the governor established the Domestic Terrorism Task Force, including a task force within the Department of Public Safety to track uh, internet chatter of white supremacists, you know, threatening chatter. Uh, again, this young man in, at that Walmart, I mean, at that mall shooting, he had spread messages all over the internet and the agency that was supposed to find this kind of information failed. So a different kind of failure but a failure nonetheless. It wasn't 77 minutes, but they had months to be able to find someone that was making out and out threats to our community, and that didn't happen. And then when things like this happen, there are solutions always thrown at the wall from both sides um, of the aisle. None of it really seems to stick. I remember directly after Uvalde, the governor essentially said we're going to be setting up outposts for mental health for Uvalde citizens so people can um, check in, um, considering the fact that he was identifying this as a mental health issue. Not sure where that stands. But when you're taking a look at raising the age of buying an AR to 21, right, that was one of the top line issues for Democrats in the state of Texas. You and I spoke about it. You just mentioned it there in the interview that I just replayed, right? Bill 2744, that's a House bill, um, doing just that. It made it through a House committee, but was not scheduled for a full vote. Uh, and the legislative session is set to end May 29th, wondering if the possibility of this happening in your state is essentially done for. Well, it's, it's pretty much done for because we only have about eight days left in the legislative session. To go back to your first point is that every time there's a mass shooting, he comes up with some excuse or some rationale and some storyline about how he's going to fix it. If you go back to the Walmart, when they established the Domestic Terrorism Task Force, he said that he and the lieutenant governor were going to meet quarterly in this task force. That was five years ago. They met twice. They met twice. And so, uh, you know, it's all just smoke and mirrors with these people. It is all, it's never about going at the common denominator, which is limiting access to guns, to weapons, to people that shouldn't have them, mentally ill people, 18, 19, and 20 year olds shouldn't access. AR-15s. The voting public, including Republicans, are in agreement with us. But Dan Patrick, Greg Abbott simply don't want to have this discussion. They refuse. Senator, you've become a leading voice in Texas um, over the last year. Um, we have heard there has been rumor of the possibility you could be challenging um, Senator Ted Cruz. I know that you have mentioned you were waiting till the end of the legislative session. I just mentioned that was May 29th, so just a couple of days from now. Wondering if you've made the decision, and if so, you're willing to announce on our program today that you'd be challenging him. Well, Yasmin, I, there's a couple. First and foremost, I've got to finish this legislative session. I promise that to these families. Just two nights ago, I put another amendment for a raise the age limit that got shot down by the lieutenant governor on procedural, um, on a procedural rationale. We're going to keep moving forward. We have a week left. I'm going to try everything that I can procedurally to try to put this issue front and fr uh, on the front lines um, in the legislative process. Uh, you know, the rest of those decisions we'll make this summer. My wife and I will have a discussion, mm. um, and we'll be. I, I promise you, we'll come on your show. Uh, if that's what we're going to do. But I think that it's we just got to do the right thing and wait, wait a few weeks before we make those types of decisions. I'm going to hold you to that promise, um, State Senator. You and I spent a significant amount of time together down um, in Uvalde. So I'll be tracking your progress and hope you come back on. Thank you, sir.